Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Red Gaming Telecom video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to start things out with AMD and the Navi based graphics cards because there have been a few interesting developments on that front. The first is the release date. So, about a week or so ago, I put out a video which detailed the release date for the Ryzen 3000 series processors along with Navi, plus some other interesting tidbits such as as Intel's roadmap for the desktop. But when it came to Navi slash Ryzen 3000, or Matisse if you prefer, we had told you that the announcement for the release of those processes along with other product details would be uh, taking place in June, most likely Computex, and the release date for those two products would actually be in July, accurately July the 7th. And I had uh, prefaced this by saying that it did depend whether TSMC would be able to ramp up enough uh, production volume uh, for AMD uh, with the Navi-based GPUs. And there is actually an update to this because the website PC Games N seems to confirm that from its own sources, they do indeed believe that we will see the GPU's Navi launch in July with an announcement at Computex. They have cited us as a source, but they have also spoken to their own sources, their own independent sources, and it would appear that they are backing up what my own sources said. So, it would appear that AMD's plans have not changed of late, which is rather interesting. And it does, if you look at the roadmap, along with the financials, you know, like each quarter, obviously, they have to release a financial update to investors and so on. And all of this does track. It just makes sense with Computex being, well, let's face it, a pretty large event in the industry. So an announcement there just makes sense. And an early release in July also makes sense from a financial point of view. So I personally believe that we will see, at the very least, the Ryzen 3000 series CPUs, along with the motherboard, the X570 motherboard, uh, be readily available in the early part of July. Navi, I'm still not 100% convinced about, because obviously TSMC still needs to uh, hold their end of the bargain up and produce enough cores, but it does appear that early indications are good thus far, and apparently, uh, AMD have been putting a lot of pressure on TSMC to ensure that they do have that product ready. It's not surprising, after all, we've seen price reductions now on a variety of different AMD products. We're hearing rumours that the RX uh, 580 and so on are going to receive pretty hefty price cuts because we all know that the GTX 1660 Ti is now out and it's actually a pretty good value product. I say it in such a tone because... The problem is that the entry level GTX uh, 1660 Ti is around 70 US dollars cheaper than the RTX 2070, which, uh, sorry, the RTX 2060, which means that there is a substantial saving there. But if you go for the more higher end custom models, then the price starts to creep up and you honestly start to get to the point where it's like 20 or 30 dollars. I would rather save the extra cash and buy the RTX 2060 because of the additional CUDA cores plus the ray tracing functionality and other bits and bobs. But that aside, AMD essentially needs to compete. They had a limited offer with Vega 56 where they've cut the prices for some models, essentially the reference designs, which is not the best, but hey, you've at least got the option to buy a Vega 56 card, which does compete extremely well in traditional performance with the GTX 1660 Ti. But ultimately, the cost of production of those GPUs, it's not sustainable for AMD to continue to uh, sell that card at that price and maintain a profit margin. So obviously, one of the things the company are doing right now is just doing anything they can to make sure that they at least have some level of competition in the GPU marketplace. But all of this points to signs that the company are desperately trying to get Navi out as soon as possible. So my personal belief is that while it's not 100% that they will get it out for July, I don't think that we are going to see the GPU slip until October. Now, we all know that there are going to be multiple Navi SKUs, and there is actually a reference doing the rounds right now on Twitter. In fact, I was in a, involved in a conversation about this along with Adore TV and several other high-profile tech people on the Twitters. And basically, a reference for Navi 14 has been found in the well-known Flash.exe tool. 
Now, unfortunately, we don't know too much about what Navi 14 is. It's possible it could be based on an APU, for example, Rainier, or it could be a discrete based GPU product. So we don't know much regarding the specifications of the card. What we can say is that um, we know that there are going to be two waves of Navi discrete cards, at least according to a couple of sources that I've spoken to. The first wave is going to, once again, take place around the midpoint of this year, and it will target up to, let's say, GTX 1080 or Vega 64-ish levels of performance, possibly a little more, possibly a little less. But apparently AMD are looking to focus on price slash performance ratio and blah, 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 blah. The next wave is going to take place next year, and it's going to focus on the higher end. Uh, I've not been given a specific performance target other than NVIDIA's higher end cards. So we can assume therefore RTX 2080, 2080 Ti or 2080 Ti, whichever we want to call it. Navi 14 therefore could either be an APU or it could be one of the lower end cards of the GPU. Now a code name is not a reference to the performance of the GPU. In other words, Navi 14 would not be a higher performance level than Navi 10. In fact, what typically happens with AMD products anyway, is that they go with, let's say Navi 10 would be the, the bigger Navi GPU. And then a subsequent cards or subsequent GPU cores rather, would be designed with higher numbers because they would basically be the later designs. But then they generally, uh, do build the larger GPU first and then kind of scale downwards. So it's possible, therefore, that Navi 14 would be a lower end SKU. To use a variant of a GPU we know now, it could be an RX 560 or a 550 type of deal. But once again, we don't know the performance numbers and it, it is also possible that it is simply an APU. But I'm not quite done yet as there is yet another update regarding Navi, and this has been spotted by the website foreignx.com. Back in January, AMD released an update to support a new SMU block, which is obviously in preparation for Navi. But there has actually been a subsequent update to this, and that's what we're seeing today. What this does is support features like the ability to set, say, fan profiles to get sys information, HW information, and much more besides. This is obviously an indicator that while it's not finished by any stretch of the imagination, AMD are still continuing to work and it's getting ever closer to the release time for Navi. Microsoft are excited to bring technology tailor-made for gaming to Windows. That's in a blog post for Windows version 18.3.3.4. Now this is really interesting because Microsoft have been in the headlines a lot recently for a number of rumors circulating about the company that they really want to broaden the ecosystem for gaming as wide as possible, including what appears to be a very deep partnership with Nintendo and the Switch, including bringing not only streaming to the system of around 100 games rumored, but including first party titles, for example, Gears of War, which may even run natively on the Switch. Now, in this instance, it is State of Decay, and you can actually see that the binary is downloading from uh, what appears to be an Xbox URL. And it appears, therefore, that Microsoft are looking to run games natively, Xbox games natively. XVC file, which is an Xbox native file type, appears to be downloading directly from the Xbox Live servers, the very same servers, of course, that gamers on the Xbox platforms would be downloading their games from. This means almost certainly Microsoft are building in the capability in Windows to play and run natively Xbox games, which is very exciting. It means that, technically speaking, games which were not released on the PC back in the day will now be able to run on the system. It's going to be interesting whether this is going to be through some type of emulation and how many games are going to be able to support this. For example, let's say third-party titles, which technically never agree to the rights to run it on PC. How is all of that going to work? But it's very exciting. And it does mean that Microsoft really are embracing the notion of being able to play on any device. Given what we've learned about Microsoft's supporting titles on the Switch, and given what Microsoft have kind of whispered regarding uh, their belief of cloud streaming, 
It also means though that Microsoft and Nintendo are no longer going to have that traditional rivalry of what you would expect between platform holders. But then, logically speaking, the Switch and let's say the Xbox are not exactly rivals. They are very different systems. The Xbox is a traditional home system and Microsoft, yes, they have dabbled in tablets and Surface devices and so on, but the Switch is a very different device and is purchased quite frequently by users who want very different things from their devices. So Microsoft partnering with Nintendo in that area certainly makes a lot of sense. Regardless, the next several years is going to be very interesting when it comes to gaming, at least in my personal opinion. I would be very curious, though, if there is any reciprocation here. I don't necessarily know if we're going to get games like, let's say, Super Mario Odyssey 2, assuming that's going to be released, which almost certainly is, let's just be honest, launch simultaneously on the Xbox. But I would not be surprised if Nintendo said, hey, you couldn't have, like, you know, Super Mario Brothers and start releasing like NES and SNES games or something like that through the Xbox Live marketplace. And it would be very lucrative for them to start selling it natively in the Xbox app, the Windows Store. Imagine being able to natively run, uh, let's say, Super Mario Brothers, buy it for a couple of dollars or whatever the price would be on Xbox Store. <laughs> it would potentially open up uh, Nintendo sales for retro games to hundreds of millions of customers. It's going to be very interesting to see how all of this plays out over the next several years. And just as interesting, of course, will be Sony's response. We've heard now multiple reports that backwards compatibility is going to be seriously beefed up for the next generation PlayStation, with the PlayStation 5 supposedly supporting PS1 all the way up to PS4. I would still like to see them support the uh, the portable systems like the V2 and PlayStation Portable, but it's possible, I suppose. Regardless, the next couple of years are going to be very fascinating in both the PC and console space. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Normal stuff if you did. Like, share, comment, and subscribe because it helps the channel out a ton. I'd also like to thank everyone recently for all of the support. It has been actually rather staggering how the subscriber count has jumped up. So thank you to everyone who is either a long-term viewer or is just new to the channel. So, well, thanks very much. You can also find us on social media down below if you wish to contact us, and also links to both Patreon and Amazon Affiliate as well, if you want to help support us, but of course that is totally down to you. With all of that said, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.